that I remembered. Okay, so Stephanie's going to get us started. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. So we yeah. are recording this session today, um, and we'll do that so that if anybody had to miss out today, they can catch up. We always post these sessions online afterwards. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen here. Uh, that one. Okay. Can everybody see the PowerPoint slide? Yes. Yes, we're good. All right. Wonderful. Uh, so welcome to our last intergenerational cafe here before the the summer break, um, where we're going to be talking about school and summer. We will continue the intergenerational uh, linkages community practice again in September. So, um, but typically we take a break from June to August here. Um, and then we'll reconvene in September. The group, of course, is still active during that time during the summer um, on course. You can always share resources, but we won't have any of the cafes or events during that time. Um, so I'm representing Healthy Aging Alberta, which also runs Healthy Aging Core Alberta. And I'll talk a bit more about that. But first, um, in the spirit of our journey to promote reconciliation, we'd like to honor the truth of the shared history and acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. And I'd like to acknowledge that our group is uh, coming in from all across Turtle Island here. Um, and I myself am tuning in from Mokinsis, uh, which the English name for that is Calgary. And I am on Treaty 7 territories and Métis Region 5 and 6. So I'd like to acknowledge the traditional lands of where I'm tuning in from today. Uh, just some housekeeping. Um, everybody's familiar with Zoom uh, nowadays, but of course, uh, if you have lots going on in the background, make sure to mute your mic um, and we, uh, you can check the other participants and the chat, of course, with those little icons. You can uh, always give your reactions with different reactions or raise your hand. And we are recording it. Uh, we will upload it to uh, our Core Alberta platform afterwards and our Healthy Aging Alberta YouTube. And we will share the link with folks in a post email in case you want to rewatch anything from the session, or if you're tuning in afterwards, you can watch the whole session. Um, if you're not familiar with core, the core platforms. Um, so we have, this group is situated on core Alberta. So the core plat core Alberta platform is run by Healthy Aging Alberta with a backbone of United Way of Calgary and area. Um, we do have core BC and core national as well, which are run by United Way BC. Um, but core is a provincially coordinated and learning platform designed to strengthen the sector and increase the organizational and sector capacity through information sharing, training, mentoring, communities of practice, policy development, resource development, and collaboration. So it's a site that has all of these different things on it. You can share resources, you can find resources. Um, we post uh, funding development, uh, we post other events that are going on. And because this group is a national group, we do have, while our group is in Al um, hosted on the Alberta site, um, we are sharing national resources on the Alberta site, and we do have core national with additional intergenerational groups as well. So um, make sure to check out the three core platforms and see how it can help support your work. Uh, Healthy Aging Alberta um, is, it's been around for four years now, and we are a network of community-based senior serving organizations across Alberta. Um, and our goal is to make Alberta one of the best places in the world to grow older. Do uh, somebody's mic is giving feedback. Do you mind muting yourself, whoever that is? Thank you. Oh, I think it is. Yeah, so we're... Oh, I think that's yours, Taiwo. I think your mic is given a bunch. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
So together, we are coordinating the community-based senior serving sector on a provincial level, and we're working with folks across the national level to really uh, collectively have that impact for the community-based senior serving sector. Um, so that we can improve the lives of older Albertans and older Canadians. So I will pass it over to my teammates here who are gonna talk a bit about our team here, the Intergenerational Linkages Community Practice. Hi everyone, um, I'm gonna do introductions today. Um, I'm Anita Newling, I'm the Intergenerational Initiatives Manager um, with Volunteer Canada. I'm based in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Um, we also have our trusty lead, Betty, um, is an intergenerational trainer and consultant with Good Links in Calgary, um, and uh, as kind of gathers, gathers this group together um, and, and keeps us all on track. Um, another member of the committee is Jane, Jane Atkins. Um, she's the, uh, I'm actually going to move our because I'm reading from our slide and I'm, we're all in front of it. She's the co-chair of the Sundry Senior Spruce Society in Sundry. Um, and Stephanie, you've already met this morning, who's introduced us. She's the engagement and communication specialist with Healthy Aging Alberta in, in Calgary. Um, and I'd like to also introduce today, um, Dale Bond, who is a, a new member of our organizing committee. Um, they are home support coordinator with the County of Grand Prairie. Um, and Dale is replacing um, Corey Ladwig, who um, you may have seen at previous events. Um, and, uh, and so we'd like to just take this opportunity to really thank Corey um, for all their time and support that they've given to the community of practice um, with us so far. And we're very, very uh, excited to have Dale on the team. Um, I'm actually going to, Dale is actually going to speak to us now um, about a program that they've been involved with. Um, uh, a intergenerational pen pal program um, that was kind of born during COVID. I won't say any more about that program. I think uh, won't, no spoilers. I'll pass us over to Dale now um, and they can speak a little bit about that program. Good morning and thank you, uh, Anita. Appreciate the introduction. So my name is Dale and I am the home support coordinator with the County of Grand Prairie. And yeah, as Anita said, I'm here to talk a little bit about a program that we implemented in kind of the middle of COVID and the impact it's had on the participants. So the Pen Pal program, our intergenerational Pen Pal program was born in 2021, in the spring of 2021, when we noticed some of our home support, many of our home support clients were in and out of isolation and uh, really bringing increased loneliness with that, um, with the isolation. So as we know, the letter art of letter writing is really becoming a memory from the past. And um, we thought what a great way to try to put life back into that. So we saw an opportunity to bring together seniors from our program, as well as um, students in one of our rural schools. We have community school liaison counselors who work in many of our schools throughout our region. So we partnered with one of our classrooms and thought we would exchange letters. As it was nearing the end of the school year, we only did, I believe, two letter exchanges that year. But we could see just from those simple letter exchanges that there was an excitement to have this connection between our seniors as well as our youth. So in September of 2021, we thought, let's get on the ball right away. And we started our program with the same class um, or the same teacher, I should say. It was a grade three, four split class. And uh, we gathered some seniors and we had, I think, around 13 students and seniors, 13 of each involved. And we had letter exchanges probably about every six weeks or so. And with each letter exchange, you just seen relationships beginning to form and grow and uh, the connections were becoming real. And you could really see that and feel that with the letters. Um, they were sharing information about their families, about their the things they enjoy, their activities. And yeah, there was just really great communication. So last year we did a luncheon at the end of our program and we brought all our seniors out to the 
school and we had lunch with them and uh, the students prepared games and activities and different um, things for them to connect with the seniors. They partnered up and the connection was immediate. It's like they had already known each other through the letters and they were just able to easily engage in conversation. We provided lunch and they made gifts for each other and it was it was really neat to see because some of the seniors had been in the program for the two years and um, he had brought, he was an artist for instance, and he had brought gifts for his previous pen pals as well. So we went throughout the school and found them and um, he had pictures for three different kids. And so, yeah, you just seen like the relationship didn't end when the program ended, like he still thought about them. He was able to meet them. And then this year, we were able to um, add another school. So now we have two schools that, and they're very rural and very small schools. So one school has um, six kids in the classroom and then another school has 13. And then we also added in two students who are part of a homeschool program. So we have three different kind of groups going. And uh, the letters were very consistent this year. We ensured that there was at least one a month exchange. The school was very gung-ho and uh, their letters were back immediately. And the quality of the letters were absolutely phenomenal. I wish I could share them, but unfortunately, my computer decided not to work today. Um, but the quality was it, it's amazing. And then we have our lunches set up. So we are doing a lunch next week at one of the schools. And then the following week at another. And for any seniors who aren't able to make it or need transportation, we'll pick them up and make sure that they get there. And we do have a couple, of course, who can't make it, but um, we have some extra seniors coming. So we have spouses of seniors coming. So we'll make sure that everyone's partnered up. Uh, this year, the seniors all made picture frames. So they're going to bring the picture frames out with them. And the students are doing painted rocks for the seniors so they'll exchange the gifts and then as I said the seniors always end up bringing their own gift as well so um, it seems we have a lot of very artistic seniors and they always make or create something for their uh, students so you know it's just it's amazing to see that with each letter exchange that generational gap just decreases a little bit right and you really see the commonalities amongst us as humans. So um, we all have favorite colors, we all have favorite pastimes, and it's really neat to see those connections and how they're being built between the two groups. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where our program's at. And yeah, it's, if you guys have any questions or any comments, or I'd love to hear it. Okay, Sierra, question. Is your other class a 3-4 split as well? Or what grade group are you kind of looking at? Yeah, they are both actually 3-4 splits. We do okay. have in the one program, we have a grade 8 student who um, I would say maybe has a little bit, uh, needs a little bit extra support in school. So she's a part okay. of the program as well. And then we had an extra senior at the other school. So we just they grabbed a grade eight student and those letters are even more phenomenal to mm -hmm. read yeah so, that would be my target audience is uh, yes. grade, seven, grade seven to 12 so and a lot of our seniors are wanting older students yeah and on like those letters are phenomenal yeah yeah absolutely Dale I love it to what do you attribute the success? I think um, definitely the teacher has, like everyone needs to be bought in, right? And engaged. And I think the ability to make sure that those connections are happening monthly is so important. And to keep the same pen pal, I find has been very, very helpful as well, because you really do build those relationships. Um, it gives our seniors a sense of purpose and fulfillment, like it truly does. And their sharing of the knowledge and a lot of them grew up in this area and they may have farmed where these kids are going to school. So just that connection mm -hmm. and understanding of the lifestyle is really, I think, contributing to the success of the program. 
Is the teacher using letter prompts or is she just having them kind of write independently? Um, I think one of the teachers this year is definitely okay. probably doing some letter prompting. Um, and those letter qualities are mm -hmm. surpass what I could have ever expected. Yeah. And I can definitely share some of those with you. If you don't mind, I'd really appreciate it. Absolutely. If you want to just. Um, I can put my email in the chat there and then you can take it down. That would be wonderful. I would like it too, actually. I'm going to put my email. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Absolutely. Dale. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Dale, why don't you put your email and then you don't have to copy all of theirs. They can that email you. Probably a good idea. And I apologize. I am on my phone. So if I look like I'm randomly doing typing, I am. Um, <laughs> but yes, I will put mine in there and then feel free to reach out. And, and I, when you say the key to the success is the teacher, she probably makes time in the classroom during the day for everybody to write. Um, during COVID at Linkages, we had a pen pal program and it kind of fizzled out because everybody was at home doing their own thing, even though we were monitoring it. But when you're supervising a classroom, every student is responsible to write a letter and I, I can see like that's phenomenal. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's more than we could have imagined, I think, right? It, that's awesome. And it just and it continues to grow. Any other questions? Um, I'll go. Um, with the letters I imagine in like English class, it could be an assignment too and help with that writing. I've previously, in previous years was at EA and I helped students with writing and it's such a great way for grade threes grade four is to work, learn and work on their writing. Um, so I get to support mentoring in schools and I am going to follow up over email too, because when I talk to teachers and they love this idea, sometimes they don't necessarily know where to start. And so I'm really enjoying hearing your example and Betty's example of the successes. And so just having some resources and contacts um, helps me help teachers. Absolutely. So. And they can, right? They can, I mean, I understand teachers are so busy and it's so hard to fit in the curriculum, but this touches on so many areas of the curriculum. So it really can be implemented throughout. Dale, how do you recruit seniors or older adults? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we started with our home support program. It started, like I said, with very small amount of numbers. And we just kind of threw it out to our staff to ask their uh, clients if they were interested. Um, and then this year, now that it's grown a bit, uh, we've reached out to partnering FCSSs, so Family and Community Support Services, um, or other groups who work with seniors and just ask them to also throw the info out. So this year we are working with um, a number of different groups to help us recruit. So, Because I can see if you're um, doing home support, you've got easy access. Claudia, yeah. question. Yes, um, actually we did that program and the problem we had was not the, the kids, it was the, because it was in the classroom again and it was great. It was French immersion actually, but the seniors, most of them were frail and then the coordinator had to kind of write the letters and the, the seniors were tired. And so I don't know how you handled this. Yeah, that's that's a really good um, observation. <laughs> um, I would say we haven't really run into that. We did at the beginning of this year have one lady who joined and she was 99 at the time. Um, she only did one letter exchange and then she realized she got sick. So a friend of hers from the same lodge they were living in uh, picked up that pen pal and because she was already engaged. So now she has one at each school. Okay. Um, so, so you didn't encounter that problem? Um, no. Last year, I would say I did. And what happened then is I wrote the letter, um, just explaining that my friend was no longer able to write it and that, but it was near the end, right? Okay. So I, I haven't run into that as a huge issue yet. And how, how old are the seniors? Um, It really depends. We have... Um, I don't know the ages of all of them, but 
the ones I do know of are anywhere between 70 and 90. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. the same. So I don't know why, but they were so all tired, all of them, except for yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, Elizabeth, I'll get, I'll get to you in a second, but Claudia, um, I've got an idea that might help you. When COVID hit and we were all shut down in March, we had a number of programs going. And then, of course, in September, we couldn't start them again, but we created activity pals instead of pen pals, activity pals. So at the office, we created activities on a piece of paper, for example, getting to know you. And then it was like a fill in the blank thing. And we would take them, most of our programs were at care centers. So if it's something like that, it's easy for the rec therapist or the therapist at the care center to help them to do that. And then we delivered them to the schools and the students did the very same activity and they exchanged. So there's an idea. And if you, you I think I've even got some of the activities if you want. I would love, um, I would love just, that. Yes, just thank email you so me and remind me to send you some. Yes, I will. Yeah. Thank you so much. Because if they're too frail and the staff don't have the time, but for something like this, it doesn't take long. Yeah. Okay, Elizabeth, over to you. Oh, you're on mute. There. Uh, in grade four, our teacher was off for a couple of weeks. I don't remember some medical thing. And we had a wonderful substitute who encouraged us to write a couple of letters to this teacher to let her know what was going on in the classroom while she was off. So she saved those letters and gave them to me years and years later. And I distributed them to the people I was in contact with. We were planning some school reunions or at least phoning now and again. Um, the reunions didn't last because so many people had unlisted phone numbers. But now I'm in a, a program called Rec at Home with Brenda Strafford Association. And that might be a way that... Um, we could have another activity a little bit different from what we've been doing with exercises and brain games. And um, possibly the seniors, if they weren't handy to a building where you were collecting letters, could send replies back by email. Snail mail still works now and again. <laughs> but it, um, I wouldn't mind participating in a a pen pal program. I wrote to a, um, a girl in Scotland for a while, and I wrote to a girl in Australia for a while, and I wrote to somebody in um, the Seattle area for a while. We used to exchange stamps back in the day of stamp collecting. So, yeah, good, so good program. Good to hear about. Yeah, you're very familiar with pen pals. Um, Dale, how do the letters get, okay, I think I'm just answering my own question, but how do the letters get from the older adults to the students? So <clears throat> a few different ways. So they all come through myself. Um, and then how do I collect them? So from my seniors, depending on where they're at, they will either email them or we will pick them up or they will drop them off at one of our offices and then they all eventually get to me. And um, with the, and then we have our liaison worker who goes out to the schools and she takes the package of letters. Okay. Because, because the students are minors, they can't have the addresses or share their own addresses. So that's good. Yeah. And then last okay. year they did, um, Anyone that was allowed that got parental permission, they did exchange addresses. I don't know that there was any letter exchanges throughout the summer, but I think with the older kids this year, like the grade eight, especially the one grade eight student, I can see that continuing throughout the summer if they get permission to share addresses. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Dale. And yeah. at any time, if you have questions, just, um, you know, interrupt. We were going to go into breakout rooms, but there's just, there's not so many. And I'm thinking if we stay in one big group, we can hear ideas from other people. So we said the topic today is 
what's happening in the schools, and also what kind of intergenerational activities or um, work can we be doing in the summer. So, so far we've just talked about pen pals and there are lots more things that can be done. So I'm just gonna ask you what's happening in your community as far as intergenerational work is going. And don't worry if it's not in a school or not in, a, in the summer, just share because that will start our brainstorming and promote discussion. Actually, my own daughter um, in Ontario, you need to get, I don't know how many hours of volunteering to be able to graduate. And she wants to uh, spend time in a residence where there are um, seniors. Um, but actually we were talking about what could she do that would be uh, fun and interesting. And uh, so we don't, so she has the place and everybody's interested, but we have not really figured out what they would do. And I know she's not the only one who's going to do this this summer. So I don't know if you have any idea that worked really well before. So tell tell us a little bit more. Will she, is she going like, to a care center? Yes, she would go to the same place each time. And um, I, I don't know the details. And I think it depends also of what she would like to do. And we were thinking about, like, she likes to, to do arts. She also likes to read and to talk. But we don't know... Yeah, that's the thing we we were kind of talking about that we were not sure. She likes to sing also, but I don't know uh, how. And it would be uh, about 20 hours. So it's quite a lot of hours. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure if people have had that kind of experience before. <laughs> so she'll go every week. Will she see the same group of That's well, I, I believe so. But it depends what she will be doing. So if right. she does, it depends what she, yeah, what she would be doing. So yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah. who's got suggestions for Claudia? Sarah, I, if I don't see your hand, just shout. I don't know, it's got like, my hand is pigmented to be like beige, which just fades into yeah. the background. Um, <laughs> Claudia, I used to do exactly what your daughter is going to be doing. Um, I'm a pianist, so I would go and play at lunch. Um, I do songs, you get to know people over time. I was like a classical pianist. So I would play my stuff, but then they would come with requests. And this is before there was the internet to like look things up. I would have to go to like the library and go- I did that too. This. The exact same thing, <laughs> playing yeah. the piano. Like, listen <laughs> to the songs myself and then like teach myself not how to play classical music. And so it was really educational for me. Um, and then like, even, you know, you're just around. And so just like being a, this is, this is why it's so important when you like show up to do things, you know, you're there and I'm there to like play music, but you end up talking to people and you get to know people. And so like next week you're bringing stuff for a someone, or, you know, certain people like their meal a certain way. And the nurses, like there's not a lot of, like they have so many people to look after. Right. And so you're there, like I was feeding some people and then playing music and then even their like um their pegboard like their cork board that has posters and stuff like that I would start like designing things or like bringing crafty things to like turn it over so I find that like I mean I think I was probably a very high functioning volunteer but it, as a volunteer when you go to a place whether that be a school or a senior's place you very quickly start to identify like what's needed here, right? And so you're there to do your baseline thing, but then always wondering like, you know, who who needs help with this or who, like I actually used to do letter writing for some of the, cause it's a finer motor thing that not everyone has anymore. And so they would just dictate to me and I would write it. And I would like, then I would go buy cards and they would like give me toonies to pay me back. And I would do all the like birthday cards to send to their families and stuff like that. And so I think like being curious goes a long way, you know, just to say like, what's the need here? Like I have ears and hands, so I can do those things for you. Right. And it's like, it's even, it's real. I mean, it's sad because they're like elderly, but eventually when, you know, eventually when they're in palliative care 
and they pass. Like I'd never met their family members before. Then you start meeting their family members and they're like, oh my gosh, you're the one who's been writing me all the cards for the last couple of years. And you're like, yeah, that's me. And so it's really like, you know, it's lovely to know that you have an impact on the lives of other people, even if you can't see it, right? Thank you so much. But yeah, I used to play the piano in residence too. Yeah. <laughs> Not classical music. <laughs> oh, Sarah, I loved everything you shared. I love that you were a high functioning volunteer. <laughs> we should all be high functioning, right? Um, well, that, that takes like modeling too. That takes somebody yeah. at some point in time when I was younger and less confident. Because um, by the time I was doing that, I was, I was a, uh, like a bold young woman but when I was younger I was so shy and so it would have mm -hmm. taken teachers to be like hi can you do this classroom lunch supervision you know can you help these kids put their snow pants on like it takes modeling from grown-ups to teach little people to how to be helpful right it doesn't it's not just yeah. natural right yeah totally and um the idea of music you go to any care, you meet any older adult, and you even if you start singing, you are my sunshine. They love it. So music is awesome. Shamshad. Yeah. So I I am a recreation therapy professional too. So when I was working at Each Care Columbia here, I saw that most of the time people need this one on one care. So that was what I I would love, you know, for the volunteers to do. Like they could come in and spend some time with a, a person, you know, on one-on-one -on -one basis. And also they love gardening for summer. That's the great thing. So gardening with them, that would be, a, you know, a good thing, good intergeneration program too. And that one, especially through the summer, right? Yeah. And Thank you. Stephanie, yeah. and Stephanie in the chat box, if you haven't seen it, she's got a great idea. Another way is to consider video letters. If the older adults can't write, you can have one group lead take video of each of them on the phone and then send them to the kids. Yeah, it's so convenient because who doesn't idea. have a smartphone right now, right? Wow, yeah. <laughs> These are great ideas. Yeah. There's actually, and I haven't tried this yet, but there's an app and I don't want to get too complicated with everyone to have more things, but it's called Marco Polo. And you're supposed to record like a uh, 30. My friend does it with her partner because he works remote and, and she was like, oh, he had to figure out a way to just be in touch, you know, without it being a big commitment. And so it kind of, you kind of like tag back and forth from what I've heard. And you do like a 30 second, just like you know, hey, got out of this thing and, you know, do 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 And it's like very low commitment, but it prompts you to reply mm -hmm. so that it's, you get that consistency. I have not used it. That's interesting. Marco Polo, my daughter, who's in her 40s, uses it with a friend of hers in another province. And it's just a way to stay in touch without committing a lot of time. So, you know, if a youth and a senior friend are allowed to have each other's phone numbers, wouldn't that be great? Or the mm -hmm. care center could just have an account, like Celta, yeah. whatever. And then it's like, okay, well, like over lunch, come over to the thing and check to see if you've got one. Or like the nurses can be like, you know, like Doris, you've got a thing, come over here. Yeah. Right? yeah. Recreation. Kids, uh, no, I just wanted to say this, the kids, they would love that. Yeah. But, but they should write. I think the, the kids should write and the seniors should do the videos. <laughs> and the if you if any of you are thinking of working with somebody in a care center, you could work with volunteer coordinator. But I find the best people in a care center that I found to work with are the recreational therapists because they're always looking for something to enhance and improve the, the lives of the residents. And they've always got their phones in their pockets. So Marco Polo, here we come. 
Okay, let's hear from some others. What's going on in your communities? So we facilitate a partnership between the school, the high school's grade nine students, and then one of the lodges. And we go down twice a month and their recreation therapist like makes an activity for the two groups to do together. Um, so we're just gonna be wrapping up here on May 29th, I think is our last day of that program. And then we'll continue on next year with the grade nine students again. And we have about 28 students for the grade nine class. So it's quite a large class and our class is coming up or even bigger, like 32 plus students. And then how many residents? It varies day to day. Um, it's generally speaking about 10. Um, the facility itself has 32. Okay, so it's a small facility. And mm -hmm. then do you find the students get to know, do they kind of gravitate towards certain the same, residents? The same ones every time, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, they've kind of uh, made their own little groups within all of them. We started in February when I came back from maternity leave. Um, wow. So yeah, it's been about the same group set that go every single time. That's awesome. Oh, Claudia, another thing I was thinking of, um, when your daughter goes to the care center, have her chat with the recreational therapist because um, often there's a craft room and they've got yeah, the painting that's... supplies, they've got all the supplies and she can just go in there and use their supplies and create. Yes. Great. Okay. Anybody else want to share what's going on in your community? I can share um, things that we've done. Sure. sure. Um, we have a teen empowerment group, which is an after school program we run once a week. And so they really enjoy going and doing stuff with the seniors. So they love playing bingo with them. That's one we've done a number of times. And then uh, we've done. Um, bread making with them. I'm trying to think of what else. So we've done some cooking with them. We've done bingo with them. They asked us to come next week to help with like cleanup outside, like spring cleanup outside in the yard. So we're going to do that. And at Christmas time, we've been doing senior gifts. So the kids will cr like craft and do different things for each of the seniors. They write cards for each of them. And this past Christmas, we delivered a hundred of them, I think, in our community. So mm -hmm. between our long-term care, our seniors lodge, and then to um, seniors in the community. So we've been doing quite a bit of stuff. And it's funny because every time we kind of do brainstorm with the kids about what they want to do, because they don't have to do stuff with seniors. It's just an op. They always will bring up that they want to keep doing stuff with that group. So um, so it's been really good to have that connection with them. Oh, yeah, we did a paint afternoon with them once, too. So yeah, it's been really, really fun. And so I got on today just to kind of get some other ideas because we're thinking about um, doing something for seniors week with them as part of our program. So, yeah. What age are the kids? Uh, typically 10 to 13. Great. Hey, Natasha, we are bringing um, a group on the 29th where we've partnered with one of the local museums and our heritage coordinator, and they're doing like a, what it was like for me to be in school. So they're bringing in a whole bunch of artifacts to have at all of the different tables for our seniors and our students to talk about like what their school experiences have been like and how they're the same and how they're different. So if you guys have a museum, then that, that would be like, they can loan out all of that kind of stuff too, right? We're a pretty small community. Museum's questionable, but kind oh, of. Oh, <laughs> we are, we have, um, this community is about 300 people. So okay. we are the same size. My dad grew up in concert. So I, oh, okay. I know exactly the size. Yeah, there is a, a museum. I'm not sure how much. Mm -hmm. it, but yeah, but that's a good idea. Thank you. We did something Just, similar. Instead of if you don't have the museum is we did it, um, with other, you know, they don't have to be that old. Like uh, kids don't know what rotary phones are or tape decks. Um, and, and there was also like games as well, like jacks, um, those games that older adults played. So we, we brought those in and, and they really loved 
Um, you know, one guy was really into music. Um, and so to show the tape deck and then talk about the music he used to listen to and everything, it was just a really engaging activity. So um, there's other things that uh, if you don't have a museum that you could just think that you might just have about, people might have about their homes, like show and tell, really. It was like show and tell from the older adults perspective where they just brought in things that, um, that you know, the, the young people hadn't seen. And, and you can even find pictures online. And if you don't have the actual thing, you can have pictures. Stephanie, do you want to talk about what you put in the chat? Sure. Taking off my HAA hat. Um, yeah, so I run an intergenerational group around fabric and sewing that runs in the evenings. So I have my group is the youngest is around 15 and the oldest is in their late 70s and we have every sort of age in between um, that we work together and we're working on a large project so having that that something to work towards together is really nice too but done lots of different uh, art related programming and art is really nice to bring folks together over all um, age spectrums um, in a creative way and to share different skill sets because it gives the opportunity for young folks to share their skills and teach older folks and older folks to do the same with younger folks because everybody has their different skills. Um, so we've also done cooking programs and field trips to fun places are always great of going as a big group. Um, and just this weekend, we had an intergenerational dance party. So that was between young adults and older adults so nobody really under 18 because we had we had uh alcohol there but uh just a, a fun dance party at the community center with a dj and music and just having a great time that sounds awesome i'm curious what's your project that you're working on i'm doing a large fabric art installation at uh, village square leisure center which is a location in calgary here really Okay, I have to come and see it. <laughs> Let me know when it's done. I'm well, gonna visit. Uh, Calgary folks, the showcase is on Thursday. <laughs> oh, oh, like all day? No, in the evening. Okay, okay, wow. Okay, I'm just, oh, Anita, do you wanna talk about yours? And then I just noticed the time, we have to start wrapping up. Well, I just popped it in the chat there that that we can kind of just as a reference that people can come back to the things that I've done in in schools. Um, uh, I have a in high school. I've got some seniors joining a the at our high school glee choir this term. Um, they've got their spring concert coming up, which is fantastic. They're having a great time. Um, and also, I've done a music project with younger um, kids in an after school project where members of the community came and we learnt something from a, a Disney musical. Um, and that was just a lot of fun for everybody. And all the older adults went away and watched the, the movie, which they hadn't seen, which I thought was fantastic. Um, but over the summer as well, to keep that kind of momentum going, gardening projects are always great. If you have a community garden locally, ask if they'll get engaged um, in, and that's what we've done. We actually had a massive bed last year. They donated to us. and um, Everything we grew with the older adults and kids together was for the food bank. Um, so it has that kind of community purpose as well, uh, an outcome. And then a great thing in a senior's home, if I mean, Claudia, your daughter might want to get involved in something like spearheading something, um, is we had a senior's playtime and it was all outside in the care home. Um, and we, we bought a water table and, and, and bubbles and chalk um, and then invited preschoolers to come and play. Um, and that was just it was a fantastic experience. Um, we had a preschool schools come, but also invited members of the, of the community to come and to come with their preschoolers. So, yeah, that was lo lots of things going on. So um, if anyone wants ideas uh, as well, please feel free to, to reach out to those of us who've been engaged in lots of intergenerational work um, for ideas. I'm always happy to chat intergenerational. So. Yeah, Thank you so much. Too. OK, it is. 21 minutes after 11. This has been, I don't know about you, but I think this has been great. I hope you all are going away with some ideas and um, it'll get your brain working and you'll be thinking of way more ideas. Everybody has my email. If there's anybody in this group that you want to connect with, 
um, just let me know or if you have any questions or even if afterwards you think of ideas, just send them to me and I'll send them to the group. Okay, um, Stephanie, can you put the link in the chat box? I'm going to give you about three or four minutes to complete the feedback form. We always need your feedback. And what I want you to really think about when you do the feedback today is um, what kind of topics do you want in the future? Because the end of August or beginning of September, our community of practice team gets together for half a day to plan all the events and cafes for next year. And so we want to deliver what you want. So um, if you can think of some topics when you're doing your feedback form, put it in there. If you think of them later, just email me so that I can have a collection of them by the time we have our planning meeting. So go ahead, open the chat box, click on the link, and I'll um, pull you back in in about three or four minutes. Okay. Hey, um, Stephanie, just for one second, can you take this down? Because I'm just going to ask them for one more thing. So hopefully you've had time to do that. And thank you so much for doing that. Um, what I want you to do, I want you, I want to hear one word from each of you to tell what value or what's your takeaway from today's session, today's cafe? I'm not going to call you out, just shout them out. Community. Mm -hmm. Partnering. Maybe I should call you out. 
Okay, partnering and community. And what I'm thinking is I love the sharing that, you know, and that's kind of like partnering and community, right? Anybody else? Inspiring. I think it's always mm. inspiring to hear from others because I just, it, it just, you know, we all get into our own work and, you know, to just share with others, it inspires you to go out and, and try something new. And for me, this kind of thing just motivates me to keep this community of practice going and I was going to say making it better, just, you know, just to keep serving the community in Canada to do more intergenerational work. I heard a speaker um, from Los Angeles. He does, uh, I think he has a band with youth and seniors. And he is so sold on intergenerational work. When he was speaking, he said, show me a problem. I will show you an intergenerational approach to solve it. So, okay. Okay, Stephanie, PowerPoint again. <laughs> so we're just going to wrap up and I wanna say thank you so much. And I already said this, ideas for topics for next year. Is this our last slide? No. No, that's why I was putting it on because you were talking about the topics for next year. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so. Yeah. Oh, so Stephanie's just going to talk about how to join CORE. Yeah. And then we're going to dismiss you, let you go and have lunch yeah. and um, see you in the fall. So if you're not already on CORE, we do have on the CORE Alberta site, we have the group there um, that you can get the updates to the events when they come out as well as we're sharing resources in the the group um so it's it's like our own little facebook group just for this this uh the folks here um and we can message each other back and forth too about these different programs or ideas uh there's area for discussion if we want to troubleshoot like if somebody same ideas we had in the conversation here if somebody's struggling with something they could put it in the discussion area of the group and we can all weigh in and give our thoughts so there's lots of opportunities in the group to discuss to share resources to connect with others um, and use that as a space to uh, to share these ideas in the times when we're not having regular cafes um, over the summer and then um, there's our website, Core Alberta. Like I also talked about earlier, we also have Core National and Core BC, but uh, our group is on Core Alberta right now, even though we're national based. And if you have any issues with the platform, you can email me at info at healthyagingalberta.ca. Um, I also put in the chat, so I'll stop the share here. Um, I put in the chat that the National Community-Based Senior Serving uh, Summit is now, they've now opened a virtual ticket for folks who want to connect on a national basis and you're across the uh, across Canada. There's now virtual tickets open and the link's there in the chat. I think they're around $90, but don't quote me on it. I, I looked at it a few days ago, so it's not fresh in my brain. And then if you're local to Alberta, we are doing regional gatherings right now um, that are free. So you could always sign up for one of the ones if you're in our province here to uh, connect with other folks. We still have um, lots of those going around across the province. Edmonton's full and Innisfail is almost full. I think there's two spots left in Innisfail, but otherwise the rest of the ones coming up in May and June have space. Um, and we will do a virtual one as well if uh, if folks from outside the province want to come to the virtual. We'll advertise that soon. Um, and then otherwise, we'll have uh, uh, further connection opportunities. And yes, we'll see you in the fall. So give us your feedback on what topics you'd like to see in this digital group in the fall. OK, thank you. And I'm going to ask our planning team just to stay on for a debrief. And the rest of you have a wonderful summer and we'll see you in the fall. Great to meet you all.